Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Jeremy Haynes and I have been helping people make a million dollars a month for a very long time now. And I'm gonna ideally help you be the next one. It all starts with a very simple understanding, ladies and gentlemen. You are your own propaganda machine. I'll give you an example with a client, with a, with a little story here, okay? I won't say the client's name out of respect for them so I could share a little more details. Allow me to dive in. I have a client that over the span of you know, a few months, got to a little over $2 million a month. Now this person, prior to me coming in and helping them scale up rapidly, was only at a low couple hundred thousand dollars a month, like give or take the month two to 400K, okay? Now when we came in, this was a new category that this specific client was selling into. Now this particular client starts the process of advertising, okay? And very quickly, you know, we start spending a lot of money. By the time that we got to the benchmark of about two and a half million dollars a month, and only a few short months, we were spending about $700,000 a month on paid advertising, just on Facebook and Instagram. Now to be clear, there are a lot of lessons to individually cover, but I wanna wrap it specifically around this, you need to be your own propaganda machine topic, which is the point of my video here with you today. This specific client, I'd flown out to Menlo Park, uh, Facebook's main headquarters, out in us in the San Francisco Bay Area. And we had a presentation done by, believe it or not, there's three levels of reps inside of Facebook. There's the standard turds that most of you will work with called the just regular meta reps. Some sometimes call themselves marketing specialists or marketing pros. These people are gonna sign hundreds of clients and they rotate clients every single quarter. These are typically the reps that you constantly hear people talk badly about, that they have very poor experiences with. Well, when you start spending either as an individual business or in our case as a marketing agency, a million dollars a month in advertising spend for at least six months in a row, you get what's called an industry ad expert. So for a specific niche of our clientele, we get assigned a very high level rep who's actually helpful. One that you can call only for your clients that they're assigned to and get a lot done. You get really cool beta access to things that other advertisers don't have. Um, you get alpha testing, which is even better than the beta testing stuff. It's like real, real high level, like new things that Facebook's rolling out, which is pretty sweet. And in addition to that, right above that level, you get access to this thing called a global partner. That's for like huge corporations like Pepsi, Amex, like things like that. So we get an industry ad expert assigned to us. And this particular client that I'm talking about in my story, this client is one of those clients that is assigned underneath this umbrella of the industry ad expert. And the industry ad experts at most will work with like 10 different people at a time. That's typically their cap. Now, a meeting at the Menlo Park headquarters, um, Facebook will fly your industry ad expert to whichever headquarters you want to go to. We love going to the main one though. The main one out there in Menlo Park is awesome. It was designed by the guy who created Disney, like mapped out Disney and uh, it's awesome food. The campus is just unreal. So we love going there. And there's incredible walking trails as well to endure the uh, beautiful California weather. So I digress. We go, we have a meeting. We're spending 700,000 a month in ad spend for this specific client. And we were running a lot of ad spend on content marketing, okay? If you know me as an advertiser, let me introduce those to the people who don't know me a lot as an advertiser. I love, and I've introduced several content advertising strategies that I've created over the years and that I've spent a lot of money. Content advertising is very simple to understand. I will take content with no call to actions, things that you'd post on your Instagram page or your Facebook page as an example, videos, and I'll run engagement campaigns or video view campaigns to distribute those pieces of content to people at different stages of the sales process. So in some instances, I'll build remarketing lists just with content. In other instances, I'll, I'll be very particular about what content I select and what content I'm gonna deploy in front of the demographic we're trying to sell to at different stages in the sales process. So for this specific client that we're spending 700K a month on, we had at least about 200K a month, believe it or not, just going towards straight content distribution. Now most advertisers, what they're gonna try to convince themselves of is, is that that's pointless and wasted spend because they think, well, there's no conversion objective outcome to it. There is no direct ROI that's trackable to it. And that point is valid. You're not gonna be able to directly point your finger at content and say, that's what sold that individual. That's what increased our show rate. That content sequence is what drove up our quantity of people closing. That specific set of content that we're running is what has shortened our sales cycle. You know, that specific set of content is what has increased our webinar show rate. You're not gonna be able to point your finger directly at the content. But when you don't run the content, you'll see the negative consequences of it. When you do run the content, you'll see the positive consequences of it. So we know that there's obvious correlations. Okay, And when you've tested content distribution at the scale that I have, simply put, 
you, you come to have a higher certainty level about the effectiveness of content distribution in the advertising cycle. Now, back to the story. 700K a month going out on behalf of this client. 200K a month of it, straight content distribution. We sit down at the Menlo Park headquarters with our industry ad expert, higher level rep, and this guy tells us that we as a company are one third of the total available impressions for that entire industry, meaning the entire industry of, in this case, it was personal development. This was an info product client that we had. Every single possible impression from the big dogs like Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi and like every single personal brand you could think of that has the most distribution in your head right now. Out of every single possible impression that existed for that specific niche when you're scrolling through your feed, this client that we were running 200K a month in content distribution on was one third, 30% of every available impression that existed for people who were getting targeted by personal development content. So we took this client from like quite literally unknown to, I, I went with this guy to a few events in person at different places around the world. And it was unbelievable the amount of people. Like I remember one time we were at a hotel in Texas. We walked downstairs. This guy's, this client's not even from the United States, okay? We walked downstairs. By the time we just went down the elevator a few floors, two people in the hotel already recognized this guy and came up to him, took photos, said hello. We literally walked one and a half blocks to get to a different hotel where we were attempting to go to an event. We had four people, four people in a random city in Texas that walked up to this guy and knew who he was. Either took photos with him, just said hello, or just were like, hey, you're that guy. You know, this is how known this guy was, just to put it in perspective, okay? And he was not like this at all when we initially started working with this client. Now, to be clear, the reason I say all this, okay, is to give you some context. Propaganda has radical, huge impacts on your sales process and the amount of people that you are gonna successfully convert. And there's a very simple reason why. There's a spectrum that exists. And this spectrum, you'll be able to look at it in many different ways. There is a percentage of people at all times, okay? No matter what you're selling, no matter who you're selling to, that are gonna be sold, okay? This specific demographic likely already shares a similar view to whatever it is that you are specifically talking about advertising. This demographic is simply put the sold demographic. The people who already know when they see something, when they hear something, it's just complete agreement right away. If you're advertising a product or service, they're already sold, they know they need it, they just buy right away. And a lot of businesses, believe it or not, they scale, without exaggeration, the entirety of their businesses off of just selling to that demographic and they're not even aware of it. That's a problem in itself for a different video. But regardless, at all times, it's a percentage of demographics that you're gonna advertise to that are already sold. Now at the same time, there is a percentage of demographic that exists for whoever you're advertising to that absolutely hates whatever it is that you're talking about, whatever it is that you're selling. So in this specific case, these people are simply put not sold and they know it, okay? If it's a product or service, they see it and they're like, no, that's not for me. If it's like a person or a set of beliefs, they're like, no, that's not for me. Instantly just dismiss it, okay? As an example of this, there's an entire demographic of people that exist within the course industry that are at all times. They see a new course, they're like, oh, I'm sold, I'm buying. At all times as well, there's a demographic that exists that is, oh no, courses are a scam. No, no, courses don't work. There's, that's not real. Every single person that advertises a course is a scam. You know? And you know exactly what I'm talking about if you look at that niche as a whole. And that exists for every single thing that exists for belief systems, that exists for political stuff, that exists for every single individual thing, okay? Products and services in this case specifically. Now, at the same time, what does that make the middle? This is what I want you to consider today in why propaganda is important. So to be clear, in this middle demographic that exists, this is what we refer to as the swing vote. These people are unsold. They are undecided. These people are the demographic that you are specifically going to have the highest probability of persuading to become a part of the sold demographic and widen the amount of revenue that is available to you as an organization, which makes capturing millions dollar months far easier than if you solely rely on sold demographics. This specific spectrum is so important for you to understand and allow me to break it down a bit, okay? As an example, sometimes you'll operate in a niche. Like let's say that I'm advertising to the sales niche of Planet Earth, okay? Not country specific, just any person on earth that is in sales, okay? They'd consider themselves, I'm a salesperson, okay? That 
demographic. So let's say that I'm advertising to the sales demographic, just all people on planet Earth, okay? I have a very high probability at all times for there to be millions, at least millions of people that are inside of the sold demographic. Why? Because the sales demographic as a niche is hundreds of millions of people big. So the sold demographic, right? If I'm just a brand new sales trainer, and I see this all the time with like random people I'm friends with on Facebook or something, they'll just all of a sudden become a sales trainer and immediately there's a, a good tens of thousands of people that become available to them, just happily ready to buy. They'll buy any new sales training that exists because they're already sold on sales training. They know the value of it. They've gotten results with it historically. They're sold on what sales training can do for them. So they'll happily invest come time that there's an opportunity at the same time, once again, the larger quantity of people that exist to convert, but they require a little bit of persuasion, they require a little bit of propaganda, is the swing vote demographic, okay? So here's what typically happens, and this is why this matters so much. Through time, okay, you scaling up becomes a little harder once you tap out of the sold demographic. So when you first start advertising, this window, this this like initial window, is like everything just seems perfect. Your ROAS is typically at the highest, uh, leads are coming in very financially qualified, like everybody's just so happy that you exist and that you're ready to sell to them. And then you reach this point where you kind of plateau. And this specific window is where you have run out of the sold people, okay? And this is where most people end up struggling because they never created a demographic for them to later sell to and they don't realize, like, you gotta do this from the beginning. This is so critical to do at the jump of your advertising. Unless you're operating on a really small budget, like, don't get me wrong, if you're trying to turn a little bit of money into more money, sure, just specifically go after the sold demographic. They're there, money in hand, ready to buy. But if you've got a chunky advertising budget and you're ready to really punch up to a couple million a month or at least a million a month, dude, you gotta immediately recognize the value of specifically getting through plateaus before they even occur. Sold demographics become people, once again, there's a finite amount of them unless somebody's taking responsibility to grow the niche as a whole. So as an example, I've said this in previous videos in a money mindset video, as somebody who operates in the personal development niche where people sell info products, I'm very grateful for people like Russell Brunson because Russell Brunson takes a financial responsibility as a business to create new personal brands as a perfect example of that. The company Kajabi. Kajabi is a platform that's essentially just an info product ecosystem. They take responsibility for creating new info product personal brands. They help people get that business set up and they target newbies. There's a whole bunch of individual personal brands out there that exist that I could sit here and talk about, but the main ones, once again, even guys like Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi, they've partnered up in the past and they've also encouraged people to get into the personal brand space. Those kind of people I'm very grateful for because to be clear, they're growing the quantity of sold people at all times into a greater number. Not every niche is like that. And to be clear, and this is what's important to understand about why I'm here, here talking about the swing vote in your own propaganda machine. If you don't want to run into the plateau, okay? You don't want to experience the plateau where you just can't make more money because you've only historically sold to the sold demographics. You got to master selling to the swing voter, okay? And the swing voter requires propaganda to become sold. So allow me to get back to the story I was telling. So this specific client, right? Once again, 700K a month in ad spend, two and a half million a month in revenue coming in, and you have you know 200K a month going towards content. Well, to be clear, we were able to keep pushing the business up higher and higher and higher because we had a consistent amount of new people becoming sold, right? We we're operating in a huge niche that consistently had more people growing and growing and growing in the sold demographic. Now, at any given time, this is what I want you to picture in your, I want you to picture that the spectrum of sold versus is unsold can change a little bit, either in your favor or potentially against you. You know, so in this example, if you've successfully been, you know, advertising propaganda, putting out propaganda organically, you know, putting propaganda where people can research and look up whatever is, you know, about your organization, product, services, etc. Thankfully, and the good news is, you'll convert more people into the sold demographic, and you will essentially marginalize the swing vote people. You won't ever make the swing vote demographic the minority. The swing vote demographic will all always be the majority, okay? They'll always be the majority. Now, this is important to understand. You are taking people from the swing vote demographic and you are putting them in the sold demographic. And believe it or not, at the same time, you're taking people from the swing vote demographic and you're also making them realize they hate whatever it is that you're talking about. And they also become unsold too. Ideally, you're contributing more from successfully putting good propaganda out there that people are becoming sold rather than unsold. So let me give you an example. Okay. When we successfully started converting more people at scale, okay, to push that business 
business to higher and higher levels, the types of testimonials changed. The testimonials went, and I'll use sales as an example without giving away client details here. Let's say that I'm selling to the sales demographic. The testimonials would have sounded something along the lines of, oh, I'm already in sales and like I'm really thankful that I bought from this person because now I'm even better at sales, okay? Or like, oh, I got this sales job and like I was able to improve my close rate as a result of buying that. Versus the testimonials will change when you successfully have propaganda to, I was going to nursing school and I quit my job to do this instead and I became a part of this industry. Um, I literally had a client had, had this exact testimony. I was going to school for engineering and I stopped, I dropped out because I saw a better opportunity with this specific offer and I decided to do this instead. You know, I was an Uber driver, like, you know, I wasn't making much money, but I took a big risk and I tried to do this and it ended up working for me. And like, now I'm doing this instead. So they become like much wider transition stories when you successfully have propaganda. In addition to that, okay, in addition, and this is very important to understand, propaganda comes in many different forms. So allow me to break down for you what swing vote demographics need to see in order to swing one way or the other, ideally into the sole demographic specifically. So there's a few categories here that I'll list. Okay, number one is framing. Number two is objection handling. Okay, before objections even come up, you can handle them. Okay, and this is this is important to understand. And I'll break each one of these down individually. Allow me to just list them off. So framing, objection handling, and then this is this is also important. Ways to think. Okay, which is a little different than framing, believe it or not. Framing helps to adjust perspectives and to make people like essentially planting beliefs. I'm gonna adjust that one a little. Planting beliefs. Okay, just so we widen it a little bit further away from framing. Okay, now these three pieces of content, these are all types of content. Okay, these types of content are tremendously effective at converting swing voters into sold demographics. So framing content would be, okay, I'm going out of my way to attempt to take a demographic of people once again, who are on the fence, not sold. Technically, they're a part of whatever demographic you're targeting, but you know, once again, they need some persuasion. And I'm in the most cost-effective way possible using content. Content will cost a tenth of a penny or a penny to reach somebody and make them retargetable so you can hammer them with more and more content down the road. That's why we want to use engagement campaigns and video view campaigns. It's the most cost-effective route to disseminating the propaganda and making it making these people aware. So point is, framing content will help to adjust perspectives on things and change them slightly to have somebody look at something a different way. Now this comes from very direct ways of doing it and this also comes from very broad ways of doing it. Okay, so I'll use sales as an example. I'll use that sales demographic that I've been referring to throughout this video for you just to, just to stay on topic, okay? So let's use the example I have somebody that's used to regular selling uh, cell phones, okay? Now cell phones, they're typically selling like service plans. Like at one point in my life, I sold, I sold cell phones and I wasn't making a ton of money. I mean, at most in a month, I'd make like $2,500 to $3,000. So if I made $3,000 in commission, I was pumped. It was a great month if I made $3,000 in a month. Now there's these guys out there and these, these girls to be fair as well that exist that tell you, hey, if you're in sales, it makes a lot more sense to sell things that are more expensive so you can make more commission. So that's why a lot of people go into real estate. You know, they become real estate agents because they're like, oh, I could go sell multi hundred thousand to multi tens of millions of dollar homes or commercial assets or whatever type of real estate it is. And I get a fractional percentage of that. That could be tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars that that individual real estate agent is gonna get. You could go sell private jets if you wanted to, and you're gonna get a much larger commission than somebody selling cell phones. Sure, you might not sell as many, but still you're going to out earn the guy selling cell phones or the girl selling cell phones any day of the week. And my point being that demographic exists inside of the sales trading space where all they're trying to do is just convince you, Hey, you're already in sales, you know, stop what you're doing and why not learn how to sell stuff for higher ticket? It's a slightly different game. You already know how to sell. I'm going to adapt your skill set to this so you can go out there and increase your earning potential tremendously. That's a very direct piece of content that would help somebody already in that niche adjust what they're doing. Like the, like the person selling sales, phones. If I saw that video back in the day, honestly, I don't know if I'd be sitting here in front of you right now as a marketer as, and, and who I am today. One little piece of propaganda could have told me at that time in my life, yeah, that is true. You know, all I have to do is just go sell stuff that's more expensive. And dude, I'd probably be doing that right now. That propaganda didn't reach me at that time. So that's why I sit here in front of you today. All it takes is one little thing to just make somebody's entire course of their life change just based on once again, one framing piece of content. Now, framing doesn't have to be that direct. Okay, I'll give you a great example. I was on a walk one time with my grandfather and 
we were in Colorado and we looked at a pine tree. And I remember I pointed out the pine tree and I was like, pine tree looks pretty weird, is it dead? And he started telling me this whole story about this like beetle that infested the mountains of Colorado. And it was eating the pine trees from the inside out and it was wiping out like entire forests along the mountains. And I was like, oh, holy shit, you know? I mean, most of the other pine trees in the area look pretty healthy. So we weren't necessarily sure that that was the case. He also brought up forest fires. He's like, it could just be like an old forest fire that, you know, the tree never recovered. Now we're walking along this ridge and like we eventually kind of like hook around a little bit. And I look back in that same direction where the pine tree was. And I was intentionally trying to find it to see if it was fucked up from a different angle. And I, I asked my grandfather because I couldn't find it. I was like, do you see that pine tree that was fucked up? And he goes, no. He goes, where do you think it's at? And I point like in the general direction. He was like, yeah, I think it was there too. He's like, oh, so it's healthy from this angle, huh? And I go, yeah. And he gave me a really interesting lesson. He goes, you know, this is a great lesson on perspective. He goes, treat this like the pine tree. And he just held up his finger. I'll use this apple pencil as an example. He goes, you look at the you look at the pine tree from one angle, and that's the current version of truth that you have on that specific thing. You know, you rotate a little bit and you look at the same thing from a different angle. He's like, over here is an example. It just looks like what it does to you. It looks like a white bare pencil. But as soon as you rotate it a little bit, this actually right here says Apple Pencil Pro. And it says the little Apple logo and then Pencil Pro. So to be clear, you and I looking at it from your angle and from my angle, we actually see two different things, but they're pretty alike. So if I describe this to you and you described it to me, we'd probably both agree on the view. But to the person who has this view over here, where they can specifically see, okay, it says Apple Pencil Pro. And if you don't have good vision, I mean, you might not even know that that's the Apple logo. So you might just say, oh, that says Apple Pencil or Pencil Pro, you know? And my point being, if this person described to us their view, this person and you, you wouldn't agree to it because your view is different. But the reality of the situation is all perspectives in this case are true. They're just looking at the same thing different. Now think about this, right? Ball or piece of framing content right there, okay? You put a story out like that as, a, as just a general framing piece of content, okay? What do you immediately do when you hear that type of story? It just kind of opens you up a little bit. It makes you less rigid, you know? It makes you think to yourself, wow, you know, I wonder how many instances, and you could end the video by like prompting them to think particular ways. You could be like, how many times in your life have you been looking at something that somebody else was also looking at and you guys had completely different views, but in reality, you guys were both right. You know, and you make them sit there and think, they're like, damn, you know, like, yeah, there was that one time where I got in an argument and like, you know, and you could even end the video with something even crazier. Like, look, beliefs cause wars. Maybe everybody's right. You know, and then boom, video ends. It's like, that's crazy propaganda right there. That opens people up psychologically to new things and new ideas and new perspectives. And they're more willing to like hear other people out for the people that hear that framing piece of content and it lands with, okay? That is not direct like telling people, so you're already a salesperson and I'm gonna teach you how to do high ticket sales instead. That's, that's super direct. Indirect framing content also works tremendously well, but you have to be a master. You have to be a master of propaganda to be able to leverage that specific type of lesson and go down that path, okay, just to disclose. Now to be clear, objection handling content. Same kind of logic. It can be very direct or it can be indirect, okay? Objection handling content would be, let's use the example that you have people that uh, you know show up to a sales call and you consistently hear your sales team say, you know, I'm getting people that show up that just aren't that sold yet. And they tell me things like, they need to talk to their partner. It's like, dude, you could put a piece of content out before the person gets on a sales call that they see that says something along the lines of like, listen, a lot of people out there, they have the opportunity to advance their life. They're ready to go. There's a perfect opportunity to take advantage of in front of them. And they allow little things to destroy their potential. It's those small moments of indecision that ruin our potential. It, it comes in different forms. It comes in the form of skepticism. It comes in the form of uncertainty certainty. Maybe you use excuses to express these things where you say things like, oh, I need to go talk to my partner about this. I'm not that sure, you know, or skepticism in the form of like, mm, I don't know. I mean, it kind of sounds like it won't work for me. I mean, that person's an anomaly, you know, it's like you could attack whatever specific objections come up in a video like that. And to be clear, once again, it doesn't have to be direct. Like, Hey, you're going to get on a call with my sales team. And if you show up saying that your partner is going to hold you back, like, you know, you're going to ruin your life and your potential. Like that's, that's way too direct. Like when you come at somebody like that psychologically, you're not gonna successfully get past the conscious barrier and attack the subconscious, which is what needs address with propaganda. With indirect of beliefs, adjusting frames, overcoming objections, you successfully plant the right ways to think and the right ways to look at things and the right ways to view the objections that might come up before they even come up. You frame them going into the call successfully or going into your sales process or going into your webinar or whatever your conversion mechanism is. You successfully persuade 
without having to use words in the sales call or in that part of the sales process where the transaction is going to occur. That's the point of propaganda and content. And like I said, it comes in the form of framing, planting beliefs, and objection handling. And it's all intended to take the swing vote, okay? You're not attempting to attack the unsold. You are attempting to attack with propaganda like that, the swing vote. Because remember, the sold people, they're already sold. They're going to show up for your sales call and they're going to be like, yeah, I'm ready to go. Here's my credit card. I'm good. Charge it. Give me access now. Versus, once again, the swing vote specifically. These are the people who will book a call. These are the people who show up to your webinar. These are the people who will walk into your store and they're gonna sit there and they're gonna think, I don't know if this is for me or not. I'm curious, I'll go and I'll find out. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they could persuade me. They're literally open to being persuaded, okay? And once again, this is where the most important thing comes into play. Okay, it's all about propaganda. Okay, the propaganda machine has to exist within your organization to successfully convert the swing vote. Now, back to the story I was attempting to tell. Okay, this client 200k a month in content, 700k a month altogether in ad spend, they're crushing, they're crushing month over month, everything's growing. Now, there's a CIA document that exists, you can look it up yourself. You think I'm full of shit. All right. And it says ways to sabotage an organization. And one of the bullet points inside of that document, that's an internal CIA document, was introduce doubt. So the propaganda masters, one of their bullet points to sabotage an organization was introduce doubt. Now, this specific client, once again, they're operating inside of the course world, okay, like the info product space as a personal brand. And they had never had anybody throughout a, a multi-year period of time have any kind of skepticism or doubt that was publicly available, none of it. Because this client was crushing it. They were doing a tremendous job. They would sell people, they'd get the client a result, like everything was going really well. Nothing, nothing going wrong. Any business that exists, okay? And let me put this into perspective. If you have the amount of impressions that this specific business did, let me remind you, one third of total available impressions for the entire personal development industry were responsible. This, this person was one third of total available impressions for like months in a row, potentially longer. And if you break that down in terms of like total quantity of human beings that got exposed to that content without exaggerating, you're looking at high hundreds of millions. But let me be conservative just to help you comprehend this a little easier. Let's say that this individual business had a hundred million people that they were successfully exposed to, okay? Now this specific business ended up having a total of about 15,000 customers, okay? So at this stage, this is just awareness, okay? And awareness is great, but doesn't pay the bill. 15,000 people though, I mean, hey, that'd keep the lights on. Now, out of that specific demographic, without exaggerating, there was a total of about 20, let's be fair and say 25, total unhappy customers that not only were unhappy, they went out of their way to go on interviews on YouTube and just talk about the fact they were unhappy. So 25 people who bought a product said, I feel scammed, you know, I didn't get a great result. And to be clear, there are always gonna be people, no matter what the business is. You could sell freaking ice cream and somebody's gonna be like, oh, it's too cold. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's rare, but that's my point. Out of 15,000 customers, you know, 25 people being unhappy is relatively rare. If you take that percentage, you know, you're looking at a total without exaggerating here, a 0.1%. So, so literally 0.1% are unhappy out of the total customer base. I mean, that's pretty freaking good when you look at it from a perspective of, I mean, what's your business like? How many people out of everybody you've ever worked with are happy versus unhappy? I bet it's probably more than 0.1%. There might be a few of you sitting here that have never had an unhappy customer, but you probably didn't have 15,000 customers. 0.1% of people were unhappy. But once again, they went on YouTube and they just said like, hey, I'm unhappy, you know, like I had a bad experience. Now to be clear, remember what I said about the propaganda machine, okay? Remember what I said about the swing vote and the way the scale works. So at all times you have sold and you have unsold, okay? So what do you think ended up happening? Well, this quantity that sat in the swing vote category, remember there's a hundred plus million of these people that you could technically consider minus 15,000 and minus whatever the unsold demographic was that are sitting there just like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm open to buying from this person. Like maybe they eventually persuade me. Now, once these 25 videos come out, which are like, ah, oh, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy, right? I, I feel scammed. They're instead of a majority of the swing vote people going into the sold demographic, 
they start swinging the other way and you get more and more and more and more people through time that start going into this this category the unsold category of like oh i'll never buy from that person they're a scam okay now at first to be fair and this happens all the time like a great example of that in this real time moment that i'm sitting here making this video for you it's happening to mr beast i mean to be fair he has that guy i don't know the guy's name i'm not a mr beast fan but there was a guy that's now a girl and that person apparently had uh, communication and, and something with a minor uh, as young as 13. And look, all of that is terrible to be clear. And Mr. Beast's association that immediately makes a huge demographic of the unsold people. Because Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast has like 100 million subscribers, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Think about that. Think about how many people know Mr. Beast like me. Like, I'm not subscribed to Mr. Beast's channel. I'm in the swing vote category. I'm not sold or unsold on Mr. Beast. You know, I'm unsold. I'm in the swing vote category. A perfect example of what I'm talking about. There's a large percentage of people right now that were in the swing vote category that just see his association with that person and potentially other stuff that starts to come out that then makes them go the other way. So that's how propaganda works. When like something comes up and something is introduced, the swing vote demographic looks for data to help sell them one way or the other. Most people are comfortable in an undecided state, but there's always a percentage of the swing vote demographic that exists that is uncomfortable with indecision. They'd literally rather be one way or the other rather than just sitting in the middle. And that's why there's a percentage of people at all times that are susceptible to propaganda to sell into the sold or unsold demographic. So point being, in this case, like dude, Mr. Beast's unsold category is growing. It's growing. He's probably losing some subscribers as a result of this. I don't know the statistics or the analytics of his channel and obviously his revenue and things like this or his sponsorship deals, but I'm sure I'm sure that there's a percentage once again, because this is how it works, that become less sold on him through time. Now, my point being, back to my story with the client, 25 unhappy customers go on YouTube and say, hey, we're unhappy, okay? This unsold demographic officially has the seed of doubt, okay? in their favor. The swing vote demographic officially has the seed of doubt when they're doing their research to potentially buy or not. And here's the thing, there was no propaganda put out in the other direction. So this specific client, they saw the negative propaganda coming out and they knew exactly what I just told you here, okay? There's a great website, I'll have my editors ideally put this up, where you can see for yourself just to visualize crowds, okay? This is the Michigan Stadium right here and you can see this is a hundred plus thousand people in what it looks like, okay? Take a hundred million people divided by a hundred thousand. Let's look at what that number is just to give you the perspective on how many stadiums full of that amount of people. So it'd be 1,000 stadiums of a hundred thousand people in it. You can't even fathom 1,000 stadiums with 100,000 full people in it that all are aware of you, a percentage of them being sold, a percentage of them being unsold. Well then picture in your head, right? 1,000, 100,000 full person audiences of stadiums that see a piece of content that just says like, hey, I had a bad time with this person. Immediately, like a total percentage of those thousand stadiums full of 100,000 people are just gonna swing the other way. Now, here's my point. That demographic will continue to grow until counter propaganda exists. So at first, the way the spectrum works is, once again, there's a sold demographic, there's an unsold demographic, there's a big swing vote in the middle. You, initially, are the positive propaganda machine. You'll naturally have, when you first start, a spectrum that typically looks more like this, where, like I said, it starts neutral, but then through time, you're gonna get more people into the sold category, than the unsold category, okay? And this is how your spectrum will typically look. And then what happens is, it's just like Mr. Beast. I mean, picture in your head, how long did Mr. Beast go with zero negative propaganda? Like literally try to picture right now. When is the last time you've ever heard anything bad about Mr. Beast? When's the last time? There's been like none. You see? Now, to be clear, that's him reaping the rewards of the initial cycle and how it ends up looking. This is the initial cycle, okay? And at different times, it swings opposite directions. When you have this specifically start to occur, like what Mr. Beast has right now, or like what my client had, you have to counteract it with additional positive propaganda. The propaganda has to go at a higher rate out the door, okay? And if you fail to directly address it, I'll give you another great example with a client of ours, a past client of ours, a guy named Ty Lopez, okay? Ty Lopez is like the president. You either hate him or you love him. 
about half the country has to hate you to be the president, just to be clear, okay? And that's where Ty sits. Ty sits at about half the people sold, half the people unsold. And honestly, I think for Ty, believe it or not, he might be one of the few people on earth that has the swing vote as a minority in comparison to the quantity of people that are sold or unsold on the guy, okay? Depending on the market you're looking at in terms of country. Now, my point is, Ty specifically, I remember a period in 2017 where the quantity of people aware of Ty in that window were extremely high, like hundreds of millions without exaggeration. Now, to be clear, Ty is clearing huge sums of cash through the door. Huge sum. And you're getting a lot of people that are, once again, are unsold of Ty and they're voicing it. They're trying to introduce the seed of doubt. What Ty chose to do is incredible. He chose to debate haters on Instagram, YouTube, and whatever other live streaming services were available at the time, probably Facebook Live. And he just posted it up on YouTube for everybody to see. So he'd take one of the doubters. He would take one of the people from the unsold category and he'd be like, yo, you want to debate? And he would just debate them. He would literally get on live and he'd be like, ah, so tell me what you don't like. And they would always say a bunch of bullshit. That's what the unsold crowd typically has. Just a bunch of bullshit where they're like, okay, like here's why I don't like you, blah, 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 blah. And then Ty's easily able to retort every single thing. And you're just like, you're sitting there as the unsold category in the swing vote. And you're just like, that's actually a good point. You know, he's making there like, and you slowly inch over from leaning towards unsold to leaning back towards sold. So once again, when and if you ever have any like negative propaganda that starts to come out, you have to counteract it with positive propaganda. And if you fail to do so, oh, good luck. You're just gonna have negative propaganda affect you forever until you just get squished out, until your sold demographic becomes razor thin and you lose a lot of money as a result. This specific client that I'm referring to, by the way, today, like in today's day and age, a couple hundred thousand dollars a month from that business at most because they never counteracted the negative propaganda. Couldn't tell that, that client anything. Just didn't feel like it needed addressed because they were thinking big. That client, to be fair, I mean, they were right in their justification to not address it. They weren't wrong. They just had a different perspective on how I looked at it. I looked at it like it needed addressed and I think that was the right thing. But they looked at it like, dude, I'm operating at such a scale here. It's like addressing, you know, 25 people People, you know, and their videos and the millions of people watching them, it's like, it's still a small percentage. It's like sub 5% of our total people becoming aware of us or even seeing them. Why would I bring attention to it? It's what that client kept saying. And like I said, you know, they were looking at it one way, I was looking at it a different way. So I digress. My point being, you have to recognize as a business, the leverage and power of the swing vote. You will make far more revenue. You will make million dollar months far easier when you master the swing vote, okay? You want lessons like this? You want exact examples of propaganda that we use on behalf of our clients? You gotta be one of my students, either an inner circle student, one of my master internet marketing students. You, you gotta get into one of my programs if you want the real juice. I can't share that kind of stuff on YouTube out of respect for my clients and their privacy. I'd encourage you to join into the inner circle if you're rich and wanna get a whole lot richer. We do twice a month one-on-one -on -one calls together. We do weekly group calls. Uh, we do have a limitation on it, of course, because I can't sit there and do one-on-one -on -one calls with every person on earth who wants to join in. So we do qualify everybody who wants to come in. We have minimum amounts of money that you need to make if you wanna be a part of it. There's a link down below where if you want to look at the qualification process and the application and apply we'd love to have you in uh, once again twice a month one-on-one -on -one calls weekly group calls we do four times a year masterminds in person here at the house in miami you can also stream live with us if you can't make it in person of course we record them and give them to you after if you can't make it or tap in live we have group chat as well with all the rich people trying to get richer group ranges in income from as low as like 20 to 50k a month all the way up to three to five million a month most people in there are at about 100k to 300k a month uh, we'd love to have you and if you're the right type of person. And as I mentioned, we have other courses available as well, Master Internet Marketing, where you will truly walk out of that course, a master of internet marketing, okay? It's a claim that I back up and you'll see all the testimonials on that page below. I'll give you one of the seven weeks totally free if you'd like to check it out and see if it's right for you. Subscribe, like the video, comment, go watch a few more pieces of uh, my content here and I'll see you in the next one. Talk soon.